Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Danecast. This time we've got another game in the series that Frog sent me. He is playing the pink Zerg in the top right hand corner against his opponent, Drumhead, but also from the same clan as him, known as All In. It's going to be another game in this series. Uh, Frog's obviously won game one, and I think uh, Drumhead may have won game two, and this is game three, but Frog's didn't want me to see game two. I think he was a little bit embarrassed of whatever happened in game two, so not going to see the light of day but we are going to see game three and uh, so this is the deciding match they're tied 1-1 one, one. i can actually do this control shift one there we go we got a best of three between these two players and uh frogs is going to be showing us and pulling out all the stops so frogs obviously is a very flexible zerg player he can do a lot of different styles he can play macro he can play cheese and uh, in game one we saw that he went for a, a very impressively timed uh, speedling attack followed by a speedling drop followed by a nidus attack so it was kind of like the one two three punch where he constantly hit the protoss at awkward timings before the protoss could deal with anything and even though drumhead was going for a, a zealot with charge all in had lots of gateways had charge had basically everything you'd want to deal with zerglings just the the overwhelming force and multitasking of frogs manages to pick him apart and overwhelm him at just the right time. So really, really impressive aggression from frogs in these games. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in this game. He's got some nice overlord spread here already, going for his third hatch, um, third hatch location instead of his natural because he saw the incoming block from the Protoss opponent. Looks like Drumhead is go not going to uh, focus on keeping this probe on the other side of the map too much at all. We saw this a little bit in game one as well where Drumhead just doesn't really seem all that fussed about scouting, which is exactly the wrong thing. If you're playing against someone like Frogs who's capable of doing so many different kinds of cheeses, you need to be constantly scouting. And there's no Zerglings on the map, so he could just keep this drone alive. He could keep this probe on this side of the map. He could be blocking this hatch. He could be popping in, seeing what he's spending his minerals on. But instead, he's just gonna bring it home to keep it safe, which again, it's admirable to wanna keep that probe alive, but uh, you need to scout, and last time he didn't send his Adept out, and it looks like this time he is posturing to send the Adept out. Might have learned his lesson from game one. So he's going to send this Adept to the other side of the map. You need to be popping in and seeing how many drones your opponent has. And Frogs is making only a handful of Zerglings. He is going to be continuing to drone up. He has four Zerglings out on the map, but he's continuing to drone up, and he's probably going to be taking this third base soon at his natural location. Um, which is going to be a nice thing for him. This Adept is going across the map, so yes, Drumhead has learned his lesson. He, need, he knows he needs to get some scouting done. Passes by this Zergling, so look at these non-combatants. They're actually not going to engage one another just because they're both on move command. So a uh, little bit of awkwardness there, but not the end of the world here as this Adept would have liked to get the damage on that, but it's really not that big of a deal. He is going to engage these Zerglings, though, and with a little bit of micro, should be able to get one or two kills as well as scouting the drone count but he does scout that there's a third base and he does get a transferring drone here really really nice actually the drone gets away just barely uh the adept trying to commit to that but it's actually not going to work for him he does get a drone here though nice little bit of transferring pickoffs here for drumhead and he's focusing down these lings but he doesn't actually keep the adept alive and he still hasn't scouted the drone count from frogs and he hasn't even sent it in the main so if he had sent it in the main he would have seen that this layer is producing, but he did not actually scout that. This is a very fast layer from Frogs, and he's, again, could be doing an Overlord drop, could be doing a Nidus Worm. So many dangerous things, and if he would have scouted, he would have seen it. He also isn't going to scout this Roach Warren, which is going down at his third base. So because he's lost this Adept, he's in a really bad position here. I guess because he's going for the Glaive Adept all in, maybe he's not too worried about it, but this is a very early Roach Warren, very early layer from Frogs, and this might be able to hit Drumhead at a time where it's very, very awkward for him. So he's playing a little bit fast and loose here. I have to say this is unfortunately part of playing Protoss is you have to be very, very careful about playing against Zerg all -ins. There are so many different ways that a Zerg can kill you early on. You have to do your best to scout and figure out what's happening. Nice Overlord spread from Frogs at the uh, air position here, which is going to allow him to do Nidus Worms. It's going to allow him to do lots of different annoying things there. But looks like he's just going to get a second gas and go for his Roaches for the meanwhile. He is making lots of Zerglings here, which is probably not what he wants, but I don't think he has the gas to make too many Roaches. We'll have to see what he decides to do. In, in fact, goes for a Spire, uh, which is a bold choice, obviously. He's making Zerglings to defend the Adepts, which is going to be a little bit scary because obviously Glaive Adepts are difficult to deal with. They are hitting at a pretty early timing here, uh, pretty 
This is almost as fast as you can get these out, maybe a little bit later, but this is obviously a very scary attack coming out, being that Frogs only has Zerglings. He's trying to transition into a Spire, but this is pretty awkward, actually. He does have a Queen and some uh, a Roach and some Zerglings here, but he's going to pull all of his drones back, try and defend this the best that he can. There isn't an overwhelming amount of Adepts here, and with the Roach DPSing these down, he's going to get a few kills, but he's frantically trying to split these between these two bases. Obviously, he doesn't want him to shade in here to spot the Spire, because that could be a little bit awkward, uh, but... Obviously, if he does manage to get Mutalisks out, it'll be good for him, but I don't, I don't, I think he's going to take too much damage before that. He's already down to 38 workers, and Drumhead is taking the third base of his own. He's shading these Adepts back in, but he might actually get his third base here. A few Roaches are rallied here. A very early Roach form, but doesn't actually make the Roaches too early, so it's a little bit awkward here. But with the cleanup here from Frogs, he's managing to focus fire down a few of these. Does manage to leave two behind. Real is a little bit of indecision here. Not sure if he wants to send it out or not. Finally commits to the shade and is going to get a few more drone kills but because of the split from frogs he is going to take quite a lot of damage on these adapts so all drumhead is not going to be committing to this too much more he is getting his blink and he's stabilizing getting sentries at his third base so as soon as these get cleaned up he should be okay but i don't know has he scouted the spire he still doesn't know about the spire and this is going to be devastating for him all he's got is a handful of sentries and stalkers he's committed so much into this adept attack that he's really just not ready so even though frogs is behind in the economy he's got only three bases to the three bases of the protoss which is obviously not what you want you want to be ahead of base against the protoss he does have this really really big wild card here which is that he's got lots of gas and he's got lots of mutalisks potential to make and harass this protoss who's completely unaware he is going for blink which gives him a fighting chance but if you get a critical mass of mutas the blink is actually not going to be the most helpful thing um, especially if you are multitasking here and you're not able to punish the mutas if they fly away So it can be a very very difficult thing if the mutas keep you stuck in your base and the Protoss takes units all over the map So drumhead has kept this warp prism alive It's floating around the third base of frogs is gonna look to do a little bit of damage But some nice interception here with these roaches is gonna stop it He does just recall it in the end realizing that there are probably uh, a, It's probably a dangerous situation there. I think he must have realized that there are mutas now he must have spotted them because He's making cannons and shield batteries. Well, actually, just shield batteries in his main base here, realizing that he's going to need to defend against these wheels. Is warping and stalkers in the main base as well. And uh, a few probes do go down for Drumhead, but with the warping of the stalkers and the shield batteries, he should be in a pretty decent position here. Does have the superior economy for now 61 workers and three bases to the only 57 of frogs but frogs is continuing to make mutalisks here he's consolidating them at the natural expansion here and now he's going to try to try his luck at the third base but there's a fair amount of stalkers here and they do have blink at this point so they're going to be able to punish these mutas and kill a few of them before they're able to escape so obviously blink is okay as a stopgap measure against the mutas but you what you really want is archons or phoenix to deal with this and it is going to be a dark shrine going down at the natural expansion, I guess Drumhead feels like this is the safest position. And uh, obviously the Dark Shrine can be very, very difficult to deal with, especially as Frogs doesn't have any static defenses in his main base, his natural or his third base. He is taking a fourth base as well. He does have an Overseer that is floating around. So uh, if his main army does engage the DTs, he should be okay. But with this Overlord spread, he's going to spot exactly where this Warp Prism goes. And he's going to intercept this Warp Prism with these Mutas, which is going to make the DT attack just a little bit more difficult especially as they are catching it as it's warping in. It's not going to be able to escape. Nice little pick off from Frogs, showing the power of Mutilus and giving you map control. And now Frogs is moving out with a fair amount of Roaches and Ravagers. He's pivoted his army composition here away from Mutas. He knows that he's forced lots of Blink Stalkers. He knows that he's forced lots of static defenses in the main base. So now he's going to attack him outside of the main base while harassing a bit with the uh, Stalkers in the main. Um, so his... Uh, splitting, he's splitting the army here, but if he consolidates both of his uh, armies in the in one position, he might actually be able to abuse his mobility here. I'd like to see him pull these mutilists back and engage the army together. This, okay, this is exactly what we want to see. So now Frogs has forced the Protoss to split his army, and now the mutas are going to join in and engage as well. With the files on top of the Protoss army, absolutely everything is going to go down. Nice army control from Frogs walking on top. The Protoss army is now consolidating again with the blinks on top of everything, but I think it's too late now. The Zerg has got too much good trades here. There's only a handful of stalkers here against the Roach Ravager Mutilus composition. A frantic warp in of Zealots is going to try and stabilize the Protoss base, but actually, uh, things are looking pretty good for him. The, a few blinks are out, but 
the plus one attack for Protoss hasn't finished yet, so it's going to make things a little bit better for Berserk. Now he's just on pretty much just Blink Stalker against Roach Ravager, Muta, and uh, there's no DTs in sight. And the Stalkers are just not going to be able to do as much work as they need to, especially if the Roaches and Ravagers start going for the probes here. It's going to try and reset this probes, this Protoss economy. It does warp in some DTs. There's no Overseers just yet, so this is going to push Frogs back. And looks like Protoss stabilizes on his four bases. Nice little pickoff of this Overseer that's in mid warp for Frogs, or for uh, Drumhead, I should say. And uh, the, the key here, though, is that the DTs were revealed on this side of the map. So he's not going to be able to send them into the mineral lines, which would actually be very vulnerable to these. There's no static defenses for frogs. He will probably be adding that shortly once he realizes here. He must he knows that there's DTs out, so he knows that it's po a possibility. So he's going to need to add some detection here and some static defenses so that he doesn't lose all his drones and need to multitask all over the place. But as long as he's able to catch these DTs in the middle of the map, it's actually not going to be a problem for him. A little bit of a mistake there for Drumhead, sending his army of DTs straight through the Zerg army with detection. So he could you know, he could have gone around the bottom side. That might have been a little bit better for him. But hindsight is 20, 20. He, he didn't know exactly where the Zerg army was, so that's going to be a little bit of a, uh, a loss there for him. Now, Frog's realizing that this has potential. He's gonna split off some roaches there while committing to the main uh, fight with his Roach and Ravager force. 107 army supply with no upgrades against the 45 army supply of our Protoss player. So even though Protoss has stabilized on four bases here to the four bases of the Zerg, he is very far, far behind in economy. He doesn't quite have his Storm yet. He's about 20 seconds away from Storm finishing. This is the timing that Zerg needs to hit here. He wants to pick off a bunch of these Archons. This is going to make things a lot more difficult for him. Until these Storms finish, Protoss is very vulnerable. Not really sure why he's poking out and creeping out here. This, this is not a fight that he wants to take against the Zerg force, especially with these files connecting. A few force fields go off, but he doesn't manage to connect with anything. And so far, so good for Frogs. He's managing to bait out the spells. He hasn't uh, really lost too much of his forces here, and he's killed two Archons for it. So gradually whittling down the Protoss' ability to defend this base. And the Mutas are still doing a little bit of harassment here, light harassment on this side of the map, just make sure, making sure they maintain that map control. And he's going to consolidate his units now. Sending in the uh, Mutas into the natural here might be actually really annoying for him. He has lots of cannons in the main base, but as long as Frogs controls this, shouldn't be too much of a problem at all. There's an overwhelming amount of Roaches and Ravagers here barreling down on the Protoss Fortress. They do have superior upgrades, but there's only three, there's only three uh, Immortals here with a Zealot Warp in. They are looking pretty strong here, but... The Mutas go into the natural and kill so many probes here, resetting the probe count for the Protoss is looking pretty scary. He's on to only two Archons for anti-air now, and things are looking a little scary. He does warp in some Stalkers to deal with this, but with the consolidated Mutas, they are going to be able to Magic Box over these Archons and kill everything. And if they clean up these Stalkers, things could be really, really awkward here for the Protoss to deal with. If you don't have more Stalkers than Mutas, you're in a really bad position. He's going to retreat to the safety of the cannon, but Protoss is basically just trying to stay alive against pure Mutas here. He's never transitioned. He doesn't have enough Archons. He doesn't have any Phoenix in, in play, so he's just doing all the damage he wants here with these Mutas. He's got that critical mass, even able to snipe this War Prism, might even be able to snipe this cannon. And now these Mutas have free reign over the third base of the Protoss. There's nothing Protoss can do to deal with this until he warps in some Archons. He's not going to be able to fight this, and this is devastating for the Protoss player at this stage. The, Arch the Immortals try to kill this gateway to escape, but as soon as the Mutas engage it, this is going to be lights out for him. Even the Archon going down his last hope. And now there's no anti-air for the Protoss. This win condition for the Zerg has paid off now. The Mutas have overwhelmed absolutely everything. The Arch, the Immortals are going down. And even the Roaches at the fourth base of the Protoss are going to clean up absolutely everything. There's nothing at the th at the third base, but there's also no probes here. So it doesn't really matter. Frogs is going for the throat where it hurts, killing the last Immortal. Not living up to its name in this game. Now the Mutas are going to go for the main base. They smell blood and they are going to overwhelm everything. Drumhead types GG. And it's a victory for Frogs. He wins the series 3-2. to two.